I had a hard time going to sleep last night. As a matter of fact, I didn't end up falling asleep until around 1 or 1.30 in the morning. And then what was interesting is that I woke up around 4 or 4.30 in the morning. And the thing that I had in common about when I went to sleep and when I woke up is that I was worried. I was struggling with this set of issues. And actually what it is is that is I was trying to figure out which, which issue was the one that was overwhelming me the most. But as I began to think about this one and the way in which it impacted this one, and the next thing I knew, I felt the weight of all of the projects, of all of my commitments, of all of the stress for about the next year and a half. And I was trying to figure out and solve it at four in the morning, completely sleep deprived. Now I could spend this week's video talking about the dangers of worry. I mean, it's something that I have a lot of experience with. It's, it's actually my number one sin. I mean, so I thought about going and, and reflecting on the text of the, the, the parable of the sower who casts the seed and, and there is the seed that as it begins to grow, the weeds start to choke out the very fruit and the life of the plant and that, that those weeds are worry. I, I thought about going there. I thought about going to the fact that, that God takes care of the sparrows and he dresses the lilies, so why worry? But I wanna to talk to you instead more about the solution. <laughs> what it is that I did and how that theologically imitates God. Around uh, mid-morning, whenever my wife and I both were up and going, I, 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 I got, to, got together with her and I said, listen, I, I really need to talk. Can we just come, can I put open my computer and can we just look at my calendar and start mapping out when I'm going to engage certain projects, when I'm going to do nothing, when I'm gonna check my email, when I'm gonna rearrange, just start mapping out everything over the next year. And we sat down and for about an hour, we came up on my calendar with different goals. Don't think about writing the new book until this date. Don't check emails until this day. Uh, take this event and move it over here. And by the end of the hour, I felt such deep solace. Because now, we had a plan. <laughs> I know what some of you are probably thinking. You're probably going, I had no idea that this was going to be a self-help group. No, I'm still very committed to this being a scripture study community. But sometimes it's important to see how scripture actually informs some of the very things that help us produce the fruit being choked out by the worries of the world. The text I wanna wrestle with this morning is Genesis chapter one, verses one and to the following. It begins with this, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's the thesis statement. In the beginning of everything, God creates the heavens and the earth. But then it starts to describe in verses 2 and following the way that this amazing creation was created. Verse 2, now the earth was formless and empty, in chaos and void, shapeless, amorphous, no clear direction, no clear plan, no clear organization. The earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. God begins Genesis one with complete chaos, mystery, unknown, all of these different things but nothing brought together. And then what we see is over the next six days of articulation, which take up the next 30 verses or so, God starts to put things in order. And God said, verse three, let there be light. And there was light. God saw the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness. Notice the ordering. He's ordering things, putting them in their place. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it. Notice the order. He, he comes to this chaos and this void. 
He comes to this formless, shapeless, empty darkness over the deep, and he starts to put things in their place. He's ordering. He says, it says, verse 7, So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it, and it was so. God called the vault sky, and there was evening and there was morning the second day. Even the giving the name of the sky, of the day, of the night, is God ordering. Verse 9, And God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered to one place, and let dry ground appear, and it was so. God called the dry ground land, and gathered waters, and the gathered waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Here, here's what I'm getting at. Genesis 1, a lot of the times, we it gets lost in the debates of evolution versus creation. There is a place for those debates, but I want to keep them in their place. That's not what I want to talk about today. What I want to talk about today, this week, what I want you to wrestle with is this idea. Our God is a God of order. He takes things that are in chaos. He takes things that are fragmented. He takes things that are broken, and he puts them together. He gives them each their space, each their place, not allowing one thing to cover everything, not making, not making you deal with all things at once. Instead, he gives things order. When we take the time to sit down and to bring order to that which is chaos, whether it be cleaning our house, whether it be organizing our schedule, whether it be trimming the yard, whether it be organizing our clothes, you're not just engaging activities that belong to the OCD. No, you're engaging something that is holy. You're engaging something that is godlike. Because when we take chaos and we bring it into order, when we give everything its place, then we are able to sit back like God and pronounce, indeed, indeed, it is good. My challenge for you this week is to not just look for the things that you need to bring into order, but when you engage any activity of order to give thanks to God because you are enacting the very mystery of him. Love you guys. Talk to you next week.